Dan, look, I love Prey. I'm so happy I got to revisit it over this weekend. Um, October 3rd, it's coming up 4K, UHD, Blu-ray, and DVD. Uh, I'm sure everyone can't wait. Um, one thing I want to ask you about is the world building, though, for Prey. Can you talk about the world building and why you decided to start at the beginning of the Predator story? Uh, I mean, I don't even know if it's the beginning of the Predator story. It is It is. It is. Uh, it is. the beginning of this Predator, the Predator in this movie. See, it's the first time he's ever been to Earth. Um, or it's ever been to earth. Um, and I, I mean, frankly, I did not come at it from thinking of, Oh, I'd like to make a predator movie. What predator movie could I make? Oh, what if I went to a different, it actually was thinking of Nadu's story. Um, and trying to thinking of a movie that could be as nonverbal as possible, just as, as action oriented as possible, but also, um, wanting to feel as emotional as it, as, as that possibly could, uh so thought of an underdog story um uh taking the engine from a sports film and putting that into this other kind of genre and then what is a protagonist that we never see native american comanche in particular um and and all of those thoughts while still wanting to to to, for to have a science fiction component period and sci-fi coming together has not always been successful and i was really trying to figure out well how is there a way that it could be and that's when predator came to mind because it wouldn't just be arbitrary it wouldn't just be and look at the science fiction thing actually the predator's thematic um uh, you know that it that it that it goes on hunts looking for the strongest thing and we'd already be focusing on a character who's um peers are are saying you're not you're not it you know and she's wanting to be it and also is is questioning herself am i it and the predator doesn't even look at her doesn't even consider her like that was like okay cool that is a movie that doesn't feel like i'm just throwing a hat on a hat that really feels like a great mixture um so and then it was like okay well wait if this is set in the 1700s and that means that it'd be before predator and and actually I should say before it was even 1700s, it was just like, what is pre as early as possible? I wanted to tell a story about this, this people in this culture that um, we don't often see. Usually it's, it's in the 1800s. It's in the Western. I just want to be like, it's just, it's focused on them. Um, and, uh, and then I realized there was that gun in predator two. Um, and I was I was in I was in the shower when I was thinking of and I was like what as soon as the got out of the shower like ran to my phone to Google like when what was what was the date on the gun you know it's seventeen fifteen and it was like holy crap there we perfect it it like it beautifully aligned um, with predator lore and what we what I was already interested in, in doing with the with the film so that is incredible that you had that thought in the shower. And, and had that 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 foresight in mind. You know, I love this character of Naru. Can you talk about uh, how to how you wanted to different differentiate her strength from the other members of her tribe, and also how you wanted to differentiate her from other predator heroes we've seen in the past? Yeah, I mean, well, I the the what I love a even though I'm not physically represented at all on screen except for maybe not have a beard now so then there's a bunch of so put put a bunch of bearded people um this this was a very personal story for me for my my it's my my feelings my heart is 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 beating in in the movie um and i think that a lot of people why i wanted to put it out there why i'm always interested in this kind of story is i think that a lot of people feel the way that nadu feels a lot of people feel like they are capable of more than is outwardly seen yet also question and hope that they, that they have that within them. Um, and, and hope they have the guts to prove it to themselves and to others, you know? And, um, it's why, it's why we, we do sports. It's, it's why we pursue careers with any, um, sense of ambition. And, um, I think uh, anywhere you are in the world, that's a, that's a very specific feeling that is that is felt by um, I would imagine almost all of us. So uh, that is why um, I focused on her and and that kind of story, and is very different than the kind of protagonist that we certainly saw in the original Predator. You know, and that Arnold represents the wish 
wish fulfillment. You know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm watching that and and saying, wouldn't it be great if I if I had all those muscles, if I was that way, could I kick it? You know, or like or just exhilarating to see a character um, kick butt on screen that is that is uber capable. Um, and not as the other thing. And not as like, what if I was there? What if I would, you know, with a, just a little bit better? Um, but but uh, but could I pull it off? You know, could I be posed with an, an seemingly impossible task and still rise to the occasion and figure it out and handle it? Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how that came together. So when I originally watched Prey, uh, when it first came out on Hulu, um, my girlfriend had never seen the Predator movies before. So this is kind of like a new way to introduce such a such a famous character to her. Uh, were there any elements you wanted to set up with Prey for people that hadn't seen Predator before? Well, really, actually, the first cut of the movie, we we did not do our job uh, in making it for people who had not seen Predator. I really took for granted the um, the what the rules are of a of a Predator. And so. Um, we had to kind of learn the hard way after screening for some for some friends and family uh, that we had missed missed that. So I very, we very much wanted this to be for anyone um, to, for it to be a great movie first and, and then a kick ass predator movie second. So um, what we what we found was we really needed to make sure the movie retaught the audience that, that it it was an alien coming to Earth uh, uh, looking for the alpha. Um, like it, it following the, um, the hierarchy of predator and prey on, on this planet and a trophy hunter, um, before we did things like, before we articulated that in the movie, um, there was a reaction to the sequence where it kills the bear, uh, or someone thought it was a vampire because it was, because they thought it was drinking the blood of the, of the bear. Before we had sequences that were it studying the ant and this and this and the the snake and the um uh and it g- getting the skull of the wolf and and attaching it to it so you know like before those kinds of things were in the movie um it was like oh I don't know what this is a shimmering red thing and then it drinks blood so you know so anyway it took it took a few unfortunate reminders that this must be a movie for everyone of course and we need to we need to make sure all that lore that is established in the other films we have in this one as well well it worked because after that i think we binged the next two predator movies so it absolutely worked awesome. uh, now prey explores this in intense survival themes how did you approach capturing the psychological aspects uh, of the character in such a gripping manner making sure the movie was was very linked to Nadu's POV to making it a very experiential film. So we really only see in large part, you know, what Nadu sees and hear and feel it as best we can. So playing with sound and um, focusing on, on the noises that she would focus in on um, and, uh, and letting the suspense build around her and towards her. Um, as opposed to it being like the other Predator films are a little bit more of a um, uh, a more classic slasher film approach where you're meeting a team of people, you're meeting a group of people and watching them killed by one. This is a much more specific, um, uh, prote- you know, single protagonist oriented movie, uh, which just makes it all feel that much more emotional and the suspense matters so much more because you care about her um and her and her specific relationships i mean speaking of that this film does showcase that such a unique blend of suspense and horror um how did you balance maintaining the tension throughout the story without really like overwhelming the audience well i think that goes back to uh, well on the one hand i would say like the what i loved about the original predator was for me growing up it was the first time i'd seen a real genre combination and that was combining sci-fi, horror, and action. Uh, what I love about Prey is that it was a combination of science fiction, horror, and adventure. Um, and, and adventure films are not a genre that we we have too much of these days. Growing up, we had a lot of them. We had a lot of quicksand and slides, and you know. And uh, and swinging from things and swashbuckle and and so I wanted to infuse this movie with a bit of that language as well and have um, moments of score that 
remind us of movie big epics um that that I grew up with. So uh so I think that and her certainly her relationship with her dog and um and relationship with her brother and it all all the emotional story makes the tension matter more but and then also when it follows through with the with the action it's a it's much more of a cathartic release um because everything's been building building up and building up and building up you know yeah absolutely can you talk about the usage of a practical effects and visual effects and combining the both and uh knowing when to use uh which one when the story called for it i mean it Digital effects when it is literally impossible to do um, anything practically. Uh, the whole, almost the whole movie was shot on location, so there was there was a lot on screen um, that that is was is in camera, um, and and CG stuff was used to just augment what was there uh, from from landscape to snowfall to um ash in the sky um to even you know it, it, there's a bit that i love that we mentioned the commentary in the movie that i'd forgotten about um through the uh the whole process of releasing the film there was a big deal while we were making the movie where amber when she climbs out of the water um after escaping from the predator her she was wearing a wetsuit that was covering her arms and it was very obvious and unfortunate uh, that we had no other take because it was something that we were just racing to get there in this in this in this pretty uh, gnarly location at the bottom of a of ravines and stuff. So um, we were we were kind of screwed until we found an awesome digital artist who uh, in just in 2D um, found a way to comp uh, skin onto her arms. So her arms are digital effect in in that scene, um, and that's you know I I don't think many people realize that or would would notice that. Um, and then there's bits where the the to make the predator more believable, um, it's all suit except it's when its hands have to articulate. We're very tight on its hands and it's sniffing ash. You know that's CG hands because his hands weren't articulating um, in the most refined way you know and sometimes we augment some of the mandibles and the face and um here and there and then sometimes it's really just it you know so it's always playing a little bit of a zigzag game with you know like you never know when it's going to be practical when it's going to be real so when you're seeing a thing hopefully you're kind of lulled into it and tricked um into and, the, and i would argue the moments that are blatantly cg um are that way because there's no element of practicality to it that you what we're at what we're doing is so physically impossible so it should sort, of, sort of proves that the methodology is sound that you that the, the moments that people don't notice are those that we're really combining both things sure i like i love uh home entertainment releases because of audio commentaries and you have a great one with you amber uh mid hunter jeff cutter uh angela m uh cat and zaro um yeah. I love audio commentaries because it's almost like going to film school in a way It's hearing it from your guys' perspective. If there's an audio commentary that you'd like young filmmakers to check out, what would be your choice? Oh man. By the way, it was my film school audio commentaries. Was it really? Um, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I also went to film school, but I think I learned as much, if not more from listening to audio, audio commentaries growing up than I did from, from movies. Um, I mean, the, uh, yeah, I would not. Uh, there's several that come to mind that were personal to me that I enjoyed listening to that I would say, well, that's probably not the most formative. I think David Fincher did some awesome commentaries. Um, Steven Soderbergh. There's there's I remember Traffic having a whole walkthrough of their post process. That's sort of beyond commentary it was showing you the avid if memory serves on the disc. That was really um, insightful. Uh, it's a great question. There's probably so many more um but uh but yeah i would i would look to the fincher and the, and 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 the soderbergh I remember nightmare before christmas also having a commentary i think i got that before dvds um that was super interesting um i remember having a vhs of the commentary version that i got at like a comic convention or something boot probably was bootlegged you know 
For sure. Well, that's incredible. Look, yeah. this the prey praise coming out October third on uh, 4K UHD Blu-ray and DVD. It has over two hours of bonus features, including audio commentary, which. I also agree. Like, it's like going to film school. Like, if anybody's going to get it, get that alone. But, uh, Dan, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Take care. Awesome.